So here I want to just show you in the next few minutes how, in fact, some of the most remarkable developments in cosmology, and then tell you how they completely changed our picture of the universe so that we understand that the universe we live in is the worst of all possible universes to live in. Okay, just so you know where we're heading. This is a cluster of galaxies. Each dot in this picture is a galaxy. Again, amazing to think about. Remarkable. Every one of these galaxies contains hundreds of billions, billions of stars and perhaps civilizations, some civilizations that are mired in religious gunk, other civilizations that have moved beyond, but, and other civilizations that are long dead. Because this, this is about three billion light years away. Three billion years ago is when that picture was taken, basically. Now, clusters of galaxies are the biggest bound objects in the universe, so if we could weigh them, we could weigh all the mass in the universe, and we can weigh them now. We can weigh them by using general relativity. Because in this picture, it's a remarkable phenomena that Einstein first predicted in 1937, though he said it would never be observed. He underestimated observers. If you look at this picture, you'll see these blue things, these weird blue things. That is a phenomenon that we now understand as gravitational lensing. Einstein told us that a mass will curve space around it. And he realized, therefore, if you had a big enough mass and you have a source of light behind that mass, the light can bend around that object and come back and be magnified, just like my glasses magnify things. Or like a cut glass goblet, if you look through it, you see many, I'd see many images of this room. Mass can act like a lens and magnify things and split images, and that's precisely what we're seeing. All of these blue things are different images of a single galaxy located about three billion light years behind this cluster. Gravity is magnifying the, the image, but distorting it and bending it. Remarkable. Truly remarkable. But because we understand general relativity, we could work backwards and figure out how much mass must be in that system and where it is in order to produce that image. We can weigh the system using general relativity. And when we do that, here's, here's an inversion by Tony Tyson, who's now up in Davis. These are, this is the system, and the spikes are where the, well, uh, this is where the mass is in this system. The spikes are where the galaxies are. But you notice most of the mass in this whole system of clusters of galaxies is not where the galaxies are. It's between the galaxies. It's where nothing is shining. About 50 times as much mass in this system, and in all systems we can measure comes from stuff that doesn't shine. And physicists with their linguistic perspicacity have called it dark matter. And we now understand that 90% of the mass of galaxies and clusters, including our own Milky Way galaxy, is made of stuff that doesn't shine. And that isn't maybe that exciting because there's lots of things that don't shine. You don't shine if I turn the lights out. Well, those of you from Los Alamos might, but the rest of you <laughs> don't. But uh, the... Um, so it could be snowballs or planets or boring stuff, but it can't be. Because for reasons I don't have time to explain, we know how many protons and neutrons there are in the universe. We can actually measure that. And there aren't enough to make up all this dark matter. So we are pretty convinced that that dark matter is a new type of elementary particle. Something that doesn't normally exist on Earth. And the great thing about that is that means the dark matter isn't just out there, it's in this room. As you doze off, it's early in the morning during this lecture. It's going right through your body. And that means we can do experiments here on Earth to look for it. 